Welcome to Black Aladdin TV. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest in hip hop news. Hit that bell, gang. RP FBG Duck, man. Y'all know what it is. Like, comment, subscribe, man. We on Black Aladdin TV. Yeah, man. FBG Duck, a very successful artist who I watched and I followed and I seen him come up from the mud like the gritty, grimy streets of Chicago. I watched him on social media like literally come from the bottom to the top. He was a guy like he had morals. You know, he believed in what he believed in and he stood on that firmly. He wasn't a guy to like try to count his guys out or trade on them because he had a little bit of success. You know what I mean? Let me hit my Hennessy real quick, y'all. Please excuse me because I'm going to talk my shit today. Duck was a dude who he felt like if he rocked with you and he fucked with you, then he fucked with you the long way. And he wasn't going to try to change up on you for nobody. That's just not the type of person he was. He was going to make sure you was good if he was good. If you struggle and you start and strive with him. When he had it, he brought you with him. If 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 he didn't bring you with you, if he didn't bring you with him, excuse me. Then maybe he just didn't fuck with you like that because he's not a fake ass nigga who was going to try to turn on none of his niggas. Like every nigga that I didn't seen him with when he was on the come up was the same niggas I seen him with when he had M's. Um, billionaire Black. Swag De Niro. Shout out to Swag. Um, FBG Cash. Wooski. Young. Dutchie. Like I seen him. Struggle and starve with them niggas. R.P. Brick, he would have had Brick right there on the side with him. Kobe, he would have had Kobe on the side of him. If King Yellow was out of jail when all that shit was going up and it was all good, he would have, you feel me? He even brought his cousin Ruga in. Like, he's not that type of nigga. I ain't trying to leave nobody. Uh, JoJo, but I don't want to leave nobody out. You feel me? Even though it's a couple people I probably don't even know about behind the scenes. Lil J locked up. You know, uh, shout out to Famous Dex. I still seen him even squash the shit with Dex, like, as they got, you know what I mean? They had their little words or whatever, but they brothers at the end of the day. That ain't none of our business. If he rocked with you, he was real enough to say that on camera, no matter how big or how small he was. He was he was standing behind you 100%. He wasn't a thousand, a million percent. Like, he was that type of dude. You know what I mean? He didn't act funny with money or none of that. And I feel like that's what a lot of these artists got on and they did. You know what I mean? They got on, they got a lot of money, and they switched on their people. He wasn't that type of dude. Shit, he didn't even want to leave Chicago. That's half of the reason why he got killed. I seen like an interview or something with his mama saying the reason why he got killed was because he was on Gold Coast. He was on Gold Coast, which is downtown Chicago, right? Shopping. And... He had Pete, pretty much, I guess, the ops, quote unquote, to say um, they had pretty much he felt like they knew his location. So he asked the clerk, even though he had just spent probably about, you know, what I mean, a couple hundred in there or whatever. He, he asked the clerk, like, hey, can I go out the back? And they denied him with that. Now, this is all shit that his mama saying. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? This is just what I seen on the Internet. And he was like, can I go out the back of the store? And they was like, I guess the clerk or whatever had denied him of that. <sighs> Duck, if I was you, I would have just went out the back of that store. I mean, it's easy. Let me take that back. Because it's easy for niggas to say what they would have did if they were somebody until they really in them shoes. You feel me? But, like, just seeing it all, like, playing it back, bro. Like, you know the type of nigga you was, bro. You know, you know what you was into. So, like. Bro, I just wish you would have went out that back door, bro. And just said, fuck what anybody would have said, bro. Because maybe you would still be here. You feel me? But, like, they just wanted him that bad, bro. That they just risked it all right then and there. Which was fucked up, man. And it's just like, bro. Like, he was, he knew how to move. That's the reason why he was in Chicago for so long. And he wasn't scared. Even if he, even if he did, like, you know, like, everybody ain't just... 
just fearless. You you see what I'm saying? Like people know what they into. So instead of being scared, they just going to be smart. You know what I mean? And he moved very, very, very smart for a long, long time. That's why he lasted longer than a lot of niggas. And he was in a lot more shit than a lot of niggas. But he lasted a very long time because he knew how to move. Duck was not a dummy. You know what I mean? And I respect that about him. And, like, a lot of y'all, y'all just fuck with him because that's what y'all respect about him or uh, how tough y'all thought he was or, you know, this gangster or this street nigga or, you know, this, this, or that. And I'm not trying to say it like I know Duck personally. I've only talked to him, you know what I mean, on FaceTime through Billionaire Black when we was up here doing a video shoot. And he asked me, like, man, y'all up there getting it in, huh, bro? I'm like, yeah, you know, woo, woo. We chopped it up, you know. He told me what he wanted for the feature, blah, blah, Skippy, and we was going to do that. But it never had got done because... You know, I had so much shit going on, but he was the type of nigga like he wasn't going he wasn't going to just go for that. You know what I mean? He wasn't just going to go for no bullshit, bro. And a lot of y'all, y'all just respect the gangster side of him. But y'all don't even know, like, dude was a real music, a musician. He really could rip any beat. Like, I done heard this man on R&B shit, drill shit, diss tracks, like club shit, like just... You know, heartfelt shit, different shit, bro. And like, not a verse was weak. Even just like auto tune shit, like whatever Duck did, bro. Like it was never just trash. You feel me? Like Duck was rapping the niggas, bro. <laughs> like Duck was really talented, bro. He had an amazing pen, and he could really spit, bro. And I really respect that about him, man. And I just feel like he one of the ones who was gone too soon. Like you even know, like. Okay, if you really look back, people that's not BD or GD, you know what I mean? Um, for example, uh, Bo Deal. Bo Deal, he fucked with Dirk Nam and he fucked with FBG. You feel me? And he knew he knew Duck had that shit. He knew he had that crack. You feel me? That's why he was willing to do songs with him and was fucking with him and had him on his podcast and all type of shit like that. Because he knew. Duck was a talented nigga, bro. You can't take that. You can't take that from a nigga, bro. When a nigga really just got that shit, you can't take that from him, bro. No matter what, whichever one of his so-called ops or enemies or whatever feel some type of way with whatever going on in the streets, come out that mind state for a minute and really just just keep it real. Y'all know damn well Duck had that good ass music. You feel me? Y'all know he was spitting straight fire, straight crack. Straight dope, A1, straight drop every time he jumped on any beat. Even when he was dissing some of those people. When he was dissing some of those people, they even knew, like, damn, that shit was hard. Shit, that's probably what got him killed. Like, boy, you ain't finna be, you know what I mean? And you getting off like that. Like, they didn't like that. Which I don't, you know what I mean, no personally. But I kind of do because I watch the internet and I see, like, it was a couple... People who was on the opposite side who was still vouching for the shit he was spitting was like, yeah, that was hard, but fuck him. You know what I mean? Which, that shit really don't hold no weight, bro, when you really just speaking big facts. <laughs> like, the man could rap. You know what I mean? They could take, why you think he made 1.7 million off a song and he kept going? And every song after that he made was hot. Every song he made before that was hot. You can't pull up a weak FBG Duck song and tell me genuinely you feel like he didn't do what he was supposed to do on the beat that he did it on. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Straight up. Shit. Him and Big and they're black. Some of the got some of the uh, best music out of Chicago. They some of the most underrated niggas. Like, it don't even make no sense, bro. And maybe people just blackball them because of the shit that they into. You know what I mean? And one flaw I feel like Duck had, bro, was pride. Which is another thing, like how I said about Mo3. Even King Von. Duck had a lot of pride. That's what I'm thinking. Like I, don't, like I said, I don't know the man too personally, but... I'm thinking, like, from the outside looking in, bro, speaking for the streets, bro, I just feel like you just had too much pride, bro. But it wasn't for a wrong thing. Like, 
every time that they diss your brother or something, like you will you will respond to that. You know what I mean? They diss one of your loved ones, you respond to that. Whether it was JoJo or Kobe or Brick or whatever, you made sure you hopped on top of that. You weren't letting shit ride. And that's respected, bro. As a man, as a real street nigga, bro, stick it to the code. I know how this go. Trust me, bro. I'm not one of them dudes, bro. I know how this go. And, and I can respect that, bro. But at the same time, bro, if you if you going to move like that, man, I just feel like you should have moved, bro. Because you you too big, bro, and you too powerful, bro, and they hated you, bro. They hated you, man. Because let me tell you something. They going to always hate the real niggas. They ain't going to never love us, bro. They hate the realest niggas, bro. They hate them, bro, because the real niggas not going for none. You feel me? Niggas is standing on what the fuck they believe in. It's that. If it's up, then it's stuck. Nigga, it is what it is. But at the same token, bro, no Chuck E. Cheese, bro. If you would have just... And you did calm... I can't even say that. I was going to say if you would have just calmed it down a little bit. You did calm it down, bro. Niggas just kept pushing your buttons, bro, to the point where... You know what I mean? Where you just blacked out. And you really ain't even wrong, man. You know... But at the same time, bro, you know how society set up. So I guess, you know, you were supposed to calm it down or whatever. But nevertheless, bro, I do respect you, your craft, your music, the type of guy you was, a stand-up dude, a father. You feel me? You you died shopping for your son. A lot of niggas don't even do shit for their kids. You feel me? So I commend that, bro. I love and respect you. Hope you rest in peace. Like, comment, subscribe. Welcome to Black and Latin TV. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest in hip-hop news. Hit that bell. Gang.